Welcome back DCS Pilot, it's Plasma1945 in this video I'll be giving you a course on the MiG-29 and the flanker Soviet HUD symbology for air-to-air -air combat. So that you'll be able to download the mission that's included with this video in the description, hit a like, hit a subscribe, and then practice getting used to the weirdness of the Soviet HUD, especially if you're coming from a NATO plane. Now, for those who fly Red Force planes, you might get some tips and tricks here. So make sure you enjoy it and uh, leave comments and questions. Now, first things first is in the 29, you have a nice HUD filter. Right shift H will bring up the HUD filter, making things more visible. In the HUD, the standard is your speed is always in the top left hand corner, your altitude is in the top right hand corner. There will be two sets of numbers. The bigger number is your speed. The smaller number is either the waypoint destination speed or altitude or the target speed and altitude. Along the bottom, you have your distance to your waypoint, your waypoint number, and your waypoint type. There's three types, route, RTB, and landing waypoint types. For this video, we have a set of drones which are flying around in front of us. They're flying a pattern, and they will not defend, but they may notch your radar. So we've got into what's known as BVR mode, the HUD looks almost the same with your speed and altitude still in place, except now your speed is turned into an indicated speed. We've turned on the radar and we can see that we have an R27R selected. On the two closest pylons, they're the ones that are, the dashes along the bottom of this HUD, they're the ones that are elevated. We also have a center tank and R73 on the other pylons. You can change the scale of your radar, i.e. The bottom of the left-hand side is right next to you. The top is the maximum range of the radar. So I've locked the target with a range of 50 kilometers. As you can see, there's an arrow that shows up on the very bottom of the left side of the HUD. And that is the direction of the enemy aircraft. Once an aircraft's locked, you will get the aircraft's aspect relative to you. As the enemy starts turning in, the arrow starts pointing towards you, which means the enemy is hot towards you. There's another arrow, which is now moving down along the left side of the HUD, and that is the enemy aircraft's distance. Currently, we're in a 25 scale, which means the top of the HUD is 25 kilometers away, and now the enemy aircraft is about 12 kilometers away. But it's not within a weapon employment range. These are the solid boxes on the left side of the HUD. The top box is max range. The second box is the no escape range. And the very bottom one is minimum launch range. Now the F5 has notched my radar, which means I've lost lock. So at this point, I turn the radar back on and I've reacquired him with radar lock. As you can see in the arrow, he is getting closer and closer and he notches me again. I take rear aspect and I get PR, which is launch authorization. Now we're within a five scale range and there's a Fox 2. The missile hits him at about two and a half kilometers, just over a mile. Splash one with a Fox 2. Now, if you want to figure out where to go next, well, we go back into nav mode. And because we've reached our waypoint one, we will automatically switch to waypoint two. The HSI to the left of your stick will show you the direction to your waypoint. It'll show you the bearing on the right side and the distance on the left side, which will count down and match the distance near HUD. There are two arrows on the HSI. The open arrow is the ideal direction from your past waypoint, whereas the smaller, thinner, closed arrow is your direction your, of your true pure direction you have to fly to get to the waypoint. As you get close to the waypoint, the two arrows will converge. So we're on course for the next waypoint, back in BVR mode. And in the BVR mode, if your radar is working, the enemy is always a dash and a friendly is always an equal sign with your radar working. The right side of your radar is your radar elevation. Imagine a beam coming out of the nose of your aircraft. I'm at 3,000 meters. The enemy's at 8,000. 
which means I can raise my antenna up into the sky and try to pick up the enemy aircraft. The number on the right side is the altitude in kilometers that you're raising by. So if you're at 3,000 meters or three kilometers and you raise by plus one, the beam pushes out to 4,000 meters or four kilometers and onwards. But remember, the beam expands. So you'll have a target reported to you by AWACS at 8,000 meters. So you know he's above you, so you start scanning up or down. The closer you are to the target, the higher you'll have to elevate the antenna if the target's right above you. Once we've got the target locked, we've got a diamond. And as you can see, the arrow is now moving along the left side of the HUD, entering our launch authorization zones. The aspect arrow is showing that the target is hot. And we've got launch authorization PR in Cyrillic saying that we can launch a missile. All right, there's a Fox 1. Now, as the aircraft makes his turn and the missile flies towards him, our minimum ranges are going to change. Or they'll also change if you change your weapon. The range indicators on the left side of the HUD, those solid boxes, are tied to the weapon that you have selected. So if we're for an R-73, we could have fired one right now, but don't need to because the Fox 1 has reached and splashed the target. Now there's a lot of information in these videos. Make sure you download the map. I've put in some tutorials in it to kind of give you hints as you fly. You can press Shift R in the map to restart the mission, but get used to the HUD because this is the HUD you'll be working with in the full fidelity MiG-29. There may be some variations, but looking at the official Soviet and East German training documents for the MiG-29, the HUD will be very similar. At least you know where things are. Now the AWACS is telling me that the next target is in front of me, but on the deck below me. My altitude is 4,300 meters, 4.4 kilometers, and the enemy target is on the deck. I've lowered my radar to minus two, minus three, minus four. I'm scanning around, looking for the dash, and there he is, and there's a lock. Now, the MiG-29's radar is notched more easily than that of a flanker. I'm looking for him again. He's in a notch, which means I won't be able to lock him. Turn the radar back on. Start messing with our approach zone, scanning up and down. I'm still at 2,400 meters. The enemy is on the deck. And as soon as you lock him, the scale will change to the most effective scale. So there he has appeared. Let's lock him. And just for a second, we had radar lock, but then our EO has turned on, which is the TP. So we're now within five kilometers of the target and the arrow's moving down and there is a Fox 2 launch. The electro-optical system on the MiG-29 will turn on if it's able to track a target better than a radar. So in this case, I was tracking with the radar, but he notched my radar, but my electro-optical system kicked in and picked up the target. All right, final set of targets. Two drones, one at 2,000 meters, one at 12,000 meters. So I can start scanning high. It was only 25 kilometers away and scanning at plus four or five, I was able to lock him. Pop quiz, what's the enemy's altitude? Well, top right hand side in smaller numbers, he's at 11,000 meters, whereas I'm at 3,600 and climbing. What's the enemy's aspect? He is making a turn away from me, and now he's fully cold. You might be wondering why he hasn't notched the radar. Well, that's because he's in the sky, and there's my launch authorization, Fox 1. Because there's no terrain and I'm not looking down on him, the ability of the radar to keep the lock is much better, even if the enemy flies a 90 degree. All right, that was a good splash. Now, the second F5 is below me. And just so I keep the video consistent, I'll just run through his ear with attack view. I am getting locks on him and I'm going to form up behind him, turn on my radar, and he is really close, almost half a mile away. I'm going to switch into vertical scan, hit lock, 
and give him some 30 mic mic. All right, splash another F5. Final thing is the landing. If you finish this mission, you can land at the airbase. The last waypoint will point you towards the landing and your approach should be at 10 kilometers. You should be at an altitude of no more than 700 meters or 1,000 meters. And at 10 kilometers, you don't need the air brake. All you have to do is go idle, drop your flaps, and once you pass through about 400 kilometers an hour, drop your gear. Then cruise along with a very gentle descent slope, giving a little bit of thrust to make sure you stay above or around 370 to 420 kilometers an hour. When you get to within approximately one and a half kilometers of landing, you can cut fully and come in for a nice gentle descent. Once you got your ground speed now down to under 250 kilometers an hour, you can deploy your parachute and come to a nice complete stop. Hopefully you were able to enjoy this video. Leave a like, leave a comment, leave questions for me. I'll be more than happy to answer them. And I think if you already have an FC3 or an FC 2024 MiG-29, download the mission, fly it so that you're comfortable with the HUD, comfortable with the environment. And uh, the reason I made this video is actually for a friend of mine who flew NATO aircraft and it was always saying the HUD looks weird. Well, hopefully this helps you out and I'll see you in the next one.